Hi, everybody. It's Mike from Here the Watchman. And today's Watchman Report, we're doing something we've never done before. We are going across the pond over to London, England, to interview Mr. Mark Sutherland. He is a director and producer of films and just a, an amazing guy who made the journey all the way from London to Dallas, Texas, to attend the last Here the Watchman conference. Uh, we had the pleasure of meeting him there, Jeannie and I did, and and I've started to do some research into what he's doing. And you need to know what he's doing and how to get a hold of him. And uh, Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Well, uh, the pleasure's mine, uh, Mike, and thank you very much for inviting me on. And it's lovely to see you from this side of the pond, having met you in Dallas. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna. Gene and I are gonna have to get over there to that side of the pond eventually. Here we're busy with doing everything that we do up here for Hear the Watchman, but hopefully we'll get there. Now, Mark, tell me for a minute, I know in 2010, your life changed when a buddy of yours sent you Steve Quayle's website. Tell me a little bit about how that led you to end up going to a conference in Dallas, Texas, <laughs> all the way from London, England. Absolutely. A very, a very good friend of mine who is, at, in fact, an Anglican uh, church vicar um we had sadly had to leave a leave a church or given the left hand of friendship that's another story but we end i ended up we ended up in this church and uh my dear friend lee said to me you need to look at this website there's some stuff on here that would make some uh, you know great film ideas amongst other things and uh, i started looking at steve Quayle's website and i started down the rabbit hole and then i stopped i turned back grabbed my bible and continued down the rabbit hole and frankly i haven't i haven't stopped and um and that led me you know i mean there are many people that we li i listen to over here whether that's la marzuli hagman and hagman lisa haven etc and of course regularly visiting steve site and others and we don't have access to that kind of teaching over here um so that has become a total lifesaver completely and utterly change my life and my world paradigm to say the least and i i haven't stopped going down so i was very grateful to come out to the conference in dallas i wanted to come last year but i was really grateful to be able to come out because it convinced me my i know we laugh about it in one sense but it actually convinced me that i'm not a lunatic and i'm not mad and that actually um <laughs> god is up to some amazing things and what is revealing to uh, his people at this time. Well, that's, I mean, we were, we were so blessed to have you there, you know, Mark. I mean, it was just a, it was a pleasure to meet you and spend some time with you. So tell our listeners a little bit about what it is that you're doing with your films and, and the work that you're doing right now over there. Um, I have the, I earn my living in a variety of different ways. I did, I worked on my first feature film in 1992. I also have an education background having taught in schools, but I work um, as a, as a freelancer in the TV and in the, in the film industry in various roles. I'm a carpenter by trade. So I've, I've art directed television shows, designed um, a few low budget films, produced a lot of short films. And, um, a couple of years ago, a young film director, friend of mine, uh, wrote a script and entered a film competition called uh, with a film called Between Lambs and Lions, which takes uh, loosely based on the book of Daniel. And it sets it in the modern context of um, the political machinations of Washington politics. And that also can having read uh, Pamela Geller's book, which I've just got, I'm just looking at it as I've got here. Pamela Geller's book, The uh, the Post-American President, and various other things, and listening to other things that have been going on in your nation. Um, I was really led to make that film. And um, that's what then has led to all the interest that I then have had in your presidential race. We've done Brexit. You've uh, uh, elected uh, President Donald Trump. So that's one of my films. Um, there is... A couple of years ago, I produ co-produced uh, one about a fairly nefarious robot that had about a million and a half hits on YouTube and various hits around the world. So I get up to all sorts of things, um, and I passionately believe that this medium 
you know, to, to make films, etc., is a way that we need to passionately use to communicate. But for me, between Lambs and Lions, I would never have thought that that would end up me being able to have the privilege to do radio on your side of the pond um, and uh, all the connections that I have with your nation. Um, and that's been, you know, that's been uh, a real privilege and been very important. So in a nutshell, if I'm not doing that, I then seek ways to fund the films because it has to be all independent. Um, and you just have to wheel and deal and find the money to make things happen. Um, and that can be extremely challenging. Well, that's a, that, that is always a challenge is, is to raise the money. And folks, mm. you know, when we're done with this interview, we're going to give you a way to connect directly to Mark. If you can help him out, you need to help him out because, you know, on that side of the pond, we were just talking before we went on this this interview. Mm. He, he's having trouble even finding where the remnant is there. Mm. Mark, do you think the church is dead in England? <laughs> what a question. Um, I would immediately say in certain areas, yes, I think it is. I mean, someone, uh, I think it was Steve Quayle that coined a phrase, and I said, we say it respectfully, which is, you know, it's a bit like when we say that Elvis has left the building. And uh, for some of us, Jesus has left the building and we have followed him, whether Jesus was there in the building in the first place. And let's be frank, I mean, we don't have time to muck around. I think that there's a lot of empire building, a lot of games that are going on. Um, and it's uh, in certain quarters, I think it's it's very, very serious. I don't know about you. I don't play golf. But the problem is, to me, a lot of churches seem like golf clubs and social clubs. And I don't really have time for that. Um, I think in certain quarters, there are people that are very, very much alive. But they are finding it difficult, like me, to actually function within a sort of a typical sort of church structure. Um, and I've been I've been a Christian since I was 18 and I'm uh, 53. But, you know, that's a, quite a time. Um, Mike, I think we ha I have to like others. We have faith that um, there are gr there are shoots. It's a bit like um, the parable of the wheat and the tares. We're finding out who are the wheat and who are the tares. And uh, it says that very clearly in scripture. And at times that's not very comfortable to actually find out. Well, amen, brother. And I, I, I'll tell you, we want to do everything we can to help you get the word out there. Now, you guys, you know, it's interesting because one of my daily sources that I go to to get the news is the Daily Mail, which is UK based. And right. I can get more information there than I can get here in the United right. States. But what is going on with mainstream media in London? Are they getting with it or are they just as blind as they are here? Well, I think they're just as manipulative. I mean, one thing um, one thing that I would, I mean, having this privilege of this conversation to say to you, if we go back to the presidential election, um, I mean, it was it was unbelievable. And and I, I, free, I freelance at the BBC if they catch me saying this now. Well, we'll just deal with that. Um, I, I, there was an anecdote that inside uh, the uh, building of the BBC, a friend of mine had spotted that there was a big poster of Hillary Clinton, but there was not a poster of Donald Trump to be seen. There, uh, and as far as I'm concerned, there has been, you know, collusion. I mean, still to this day, uh, some of the mainstream media find it hard to even call, to even say President Donald Trump. They call him Donald Trump. That typifies it. But in the presidential race, some of the lies, some of the things that came out was exactly the same. Um, when they accused, uh, give you two examples. So when they accused Donald Trump of taking the Mickey out of a uh, out of a disabled journalist, which he did not, that was front, that was up front on the BBC News, you know, one night. And I remember walking in there and thinking, that's a that's an absolute lie. Then you had another case where Hillary Rodham Clinton was giving a speech, and I thought, well, that's green screen. And uh, and then that came out about how she walked from stage right to stage left in front of various people, mobile phones. And this is on the BBC. This is the, you know, the, the famous BBC or the biased broadcasting company, as some people call it. It's a bit like CNN, the Clinton News Network and all the rest. They have been at it. Um, and then you then go, yes, you go to the Daily Mail. Then you go to the Telegraph as well. I mean, the. In regard to the whole Brexit debate, 
people were doing that. People were chucking out lies and and uh, et cetera, et cetera beforehand. I mean, I was in the studio, Mike, when David Cameron and Nigel Farage debated. I was actually in the studio that night and I prayed all over that set. I deliberately worked out a way to, you know, go on that set as many times as I can to pray about that because you could feel spiritually the um, the sort of uh, twisting of truth within the air. And that night, um, a lady who uh, supposedly is a freelance journalist of work, work or work for the Huffington Post as a plant. So answering the question, sorry, there has been huge manipulation going on. And it is incredible, as you hinted before we uh, when before we came on about the fact that you have to go to the Daily Mail to find out the truth about what is going on on your side of the pond. Um, and also to bear in mind that an ex uh, uh, an ex director general of the BBC, uh, Mark Thompson, this is fact, then is editor, I think, of uh, either the New York Times. Or, I think it's the New York Times or the New York Post. So we have to draw a conclusion that I think there is conclusion, there is collusion, and there is manipulation on both sides of the pond. I, I think you're. I, I think you're right. There is collusion, and they want to manipulate and tell us what what they want us to hear. Hmm. You know, so much has gone on. On. I mean, you've had some brutal terror attacks over there. And you have a very large Muslim community uh, right there in London. How is that all working out? And what is the sentiment of the people, the English people, about this influx of Muslims into your country? That's very interesting, isn't it? Because as I was just saying before, uh, before we were speaking before, there are two strands. You know, we have, we have Islam and we have people that are Muslims. I want these people who are Muslims to become to become Christians um, because that is the only answer. We, um, we are in a position where I think we would even have to question in certain aspects of our society the whole issue of free speech because when our prime minister turns around and says it's, uh, it's a peaceful religion, then on a personal level with Islam, I then have to question that. Um, yeah, there, there are huge issues. There are issues, Mike. Um, and then there is a lot of good work being done. Um, if someone actually said, uh, do we think there are no-go areas in London? I would turn around and say to you, uh, on the one hand, I would say no. But then again, I'm a man. I would actually say no, there isn't. But on the other hand, there are videos, quite understandably, that they're out there of various people who uh, follow the uh, faith of Islam telling uh, various uh, young ladies and all the rest to dress pop properly. So all those issues are out there. It's what's, go it's what's going on. Um, I think people are beaten down in certain aspects of this in regard to political correctness and all the rest. Well, Jeannie's, Jeannie's joining us uh, again right now, and she, Mark, she has a question she'd like to ask you. So, Mark, I have a question that has always intrigued me, and that is, you know, there's the city of London, yep. okay, which is separate from London the city, right? Abs absolutely, absolutely, which is, is the, the, bank, the banking district. Financial hub. Yep. Correct. Right. Yep. Okay. So, and that's and that's primarily um, run by the Rothschilds. Correct. Yep. And that's what yep. we that's what we are told, at least here in in the states. So my question to you is, do you believe that the Rothschilds, the Bushes, the Rockefellers? the Warburgs, whoever else is out there, um, are they all on the same team? Are all these globalists, George Soros, are they all colluding together or are they fighting for world power? Very interesting question. I think they are all, I think, 
They are. They have all colluded. I mean, as you know, in 2002, when Rockefeller wrote his autobiography and he was accused of, you know, he said people accuse us of starting a one world government or collusing or colluding to do that. And then he turned around and says, you know, I stand guilty as charged. I think there is. I think there's all a different uh, pronged attack. Um, now, where I live, you know, I live with uh, around people who work in the banking industry and there's Christians as well who wouldn't even understand how the uh, the Federal Reserve was formed on, uh, you know, 22nd of December 1913 or wherever it was. Wouldn't understand that it came out of a discussion in, in 1910 on on Jekyll Island, etc. Jeannie, you're right. There is a there is a collusion. I mean, I don't have to tell you the history of the Bush family. I don't have to tell you the history of the Rucker family, where David Rockefeller, you know, all linked with Aldrich and all the rest, um, or Allberg. You know, it's it's there. It's all there. And in the end, as that book says, you know, none dare call it conspiracy. It is a conspiracy. It's the greatest conspiracy ever, you know, ever told. Really. I mean, it, you in many ways you can't quite you can't quite believe it. Within the city of London. There are very strong uh, Masonic masonry links as well. And you, I mean, on your one dollar note, when you turn it over, you've got the pyramid, haven't you? You've got the 33 degree explanation of all of that. Um, I don't know, if, Jeannie, I don't know if I'm, I, hopefully I'm answering the question. The question is, yes, you know, there is a, I believe in the end, there is a collusion the big issue is that there is so much that comes at you that once you get deprogrammed, you see all this. And I, I use that phrase. You get deprogrammed and see it in a different way. Yeah. And you yes. and you just see how all these different stages go on, because there is. I mean, we laugh about it, don't we, in some ways. But there is the Matrix films. We've got the red. We've got the blue pill. And you step away from this and you start to see how um, mortgage is like with Fannie Mac and Fannie Mae, how mortgages, the whole mortgage things is is uh, is uh, pushed through. You go back to your country in 1997, where you've got Larry Sussman turning retail banks into commercial banks and completely, you know, opening all that up under Clinton to complete chaos. And we had exactly the same here. And then you have all the subprime mortgage stuff. Absolutely. But it come. But the other thing is, Jeannie, is that there are a number of Christians who are benefiting, who are benefiting financially by working in that system, and they are. I may be about to see, you know, a friend of mine is. I go and have dinner with him shortly, at some point. And if I was to try and explain all this, I'm just viewed as a complete and utter lunatic. So sometimes we've just got to feed little bits of morsels. The two within the city of London. You've got um, there are little dragons on as you drive in in certain places because the city of London has its own police force. City of London police force. So you so when you have the uh, the mayoral parade every year, uh, two two icons are paraded, which is Gog and Magog. And we all know where that comes from. Right. Yeah. Well, so so just just to clarify what you've interpreted you know knowing that you know you're you're in london you you guys are kind of ahead of the curve in terms of things that have been broken down by the new world order system like for example didn't you aren't your gun rights in a way we don't we don't have a second amendment right i mean we don't have the second amendment at all and to quickly to quickly if we bring in Brexit as part of this discussion if we just quickly look at that I made I made a documentary called Flexit the movie which was the definitive guide to explaining how the UK leaves the EU and defends its economy nothing was said in the debates in regard to the EU debates over the fact that the uh, European Union was founded approximately around about 1924 as an idea as a supranational government that would take away treaty by treaty the democracy of each individual country that joined it. And two people I know wrote a book called The History of Europe and the Great Deception. It's a seminal book written by Richard North and Christopher Booker. Christopher Booker writes in the Daily Telegraph every Sunday. 
that book confirmed what I thought. So asking this, we're to, uh, to some extent not answering your question, but answering it. We have just come out of uh, basic. Well, we have voted to leave tyranny. We have voted to leave that where there is no you are a representative republic. We are a democracy. And my own understanding that, and I'm not going to insult two wonderful Americans about trying to give you American history, but they are profound. In one sense, they're profoundly different systems, which we don't understand. But we have just come out of a supranational government, and we have now reached a point where our own swamp, the equivalent of the Washington swamp, has been exposed in the Houses of Parliament, where people on all parties side, like with your republic, the Democrats, you've got people on both sides that are colluding and it's business as usual as long as we just continue to lobby. Over here, it's been exposed. People in the Tory party, people in the Labour party, people in the Liberal party, who are have been on this EU train. And we joined in 1973. We were just taken into the Europe without voting for it. The then Prime Minister Ted Heath just stuck it into a small little paragraph and said, when, I, when we win the election, they won it in 1972, and the manifesto was there, we are just going to take you in. We then had a vote in 1975 to leave, but we joined a common market, Jeannie and Mike, not a political union. And it was confirmed the political union in 2010. And I will say this to you, and it's one of the other reasons I came to Dallas. It's an absolute miracle. It is, it is an incredible miracle that we voted to, voted to leave. It was an incredible miracle that we voted to leave. And um, a lot of people have been praying for that. And as we have been praying to leave the EU, we then were praying for you with your presidential election. We then left a tyrannic well thank you guys as well because i know the prayers were going across that pond on both sides it was a huge spiritual battle and on the evening of um on the, yeah absolutely on the evening of the night before the vote i actually prayed that there would be floods in london that it would pour with rain because then the certain yuppies would not be bothered to go out and vote because they just thought they were going to walk this and there was a massive lightning storm in southern England around the Hastings wow. area, which is quite significant because of, um, of uh, William the Conqueror coming over and all the rest. So it was quite spiritually significant. And um, so we voted to leave. But the thing is, and it goes back to the other things we were saying, is that people don't know that. They don't know the history of that. That was never explained. That was never, ever explained. And of course, it's caused a massive division in the church because a lot of Christians going, we want to stay in Europe, where those of us are going, no, we wish to leave because we have no right to give away our country um, under God in this way. We hadn't consulted on him. And the other key thing is, is that as a nation, they wanted to take us into Europe in 1958. And just remember that the Second World War, of course, had just ended in 1945. So he wanted to take us in 1958, 1961 and 1968. And each time it was no, no, no. Um, and uh, so 1973, we, we went in. Um, it may be slightly going off the subject, but it's to say to you, to you guys and everyone else across in your great nation, the battle the huge battle that has gone on, but the absolute war that has now broken out on both sides. I don't have to tell you that. You're fully aware of that as we as we are. Um, but I think a lot of people, I mean, it's a small people who are a group of people who are awake on this side. Yeah, well, <laughs> amen. <clears throat> Excuse me, I meant to that, you know, it's amazing the knowledge that you have and what's going on over there. We're going to want to have you back on our show. We're, we're, we're running out of time today. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're going to try and get you exposed to some other people here on this side of the pond. Amazing stuff, folks. Mark, if people want to get a hold of you, if they want to find out about your films, how do they reach you? That's very kind of you. And can I just say that I, you know, it's, 
fantastic to have this conversation and i really appreciate what you've said and just just to say again that if i hadn't have, if by coming to the conference it did my mental health the world of good because i just convinced myself i am not mad so just bless you for that um how they can reach me um on fa on facebook i that you can find me on between lambs and lions but i have another facebook page called across the pond uh for obvious reasons but my production company is creative www.creativehubproductionslimited.com you can find me there um but if you go on youtube please look up between lambs and lions the short film which we would love to turn into a feature film um and just spread the word but thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate that. Okay. I have to tell you something before we go. That um, G. Dunn on one side of my family, and um, my genealogy goes back to King Alfred the Great. He is my, I think, my 38th great grandfather. <laughs> so wow. Wow. learning that, I guess, you know, I, maybe all of us can go back to him. I don't know because the gene pool you know, is only so big, but mm -hmm. it was really interesting learning about him and how he was such a man of God mm -hmm. in the ninth century or the 10th century. And, um, you know, so I have a, my heart re it really goes out to the Brits knowing that I have that heritage mm -hmm. and you know, we just, we just love you guys so much over there and the Christians that are, that are, trying to remain awake and trying to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, you know, God didn't church buildings onto us. He, he wanted us to go out and, and, and most of us are, you know, Snapchatting and selfies and mm -hmm. just, they're, we're not even communicating or texting. Mm -hmm. We're not even talking to one another. Mm -hmm. So how can, so I just want to encourage you not only through your film, but through people we're going to connect you with so that you can be on their shows um, to reach out, you know, one on one. And, you know, there, there needs to be, um, you know, a revival in England, just like we're, you know, working on a revival here. So I, we are going to pray for yeah. that and get you connected to as many people as we can, Mark. And, you well, know, Mark, it's it's uh, it's so true. I mean, this whole revival that we're going through needs to be global. Yes, yes. And hopefully we can work with you to help spread that word. But again, I just want to thank you for taking your time. I know it's the evening over there, probably dinner time about right now. Yeah, uh, I've got to run off and eat. So, That's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, listen, God bless you for all you're doing over there and, and uh, for joining us today. And we're going to have you back on the show uh, in the next couple of weeks. We'll talk about some other stuff that's going on there and, and keep this channel open. So, folks, until the next time, uh, until we see you again on the Watchman Report, please pray. Pray for our country. Pray for mm -hmm. pray for mm -hmm. England. Pray for all of us that are in this fight for Jesus and to help us keep going. Mm -hmm. So to each and every one of you, until I see you again, God bless.